What do we got here? I got an old Stevens shotgun, three triggers. It's been in the family for about 60 years. I travel around the country with my line of work, and I've been toting the shotgun around for the last 15 years. What do you do for a living? I'm an insurance adjuster. Sounds like you should have a briefcase, not a shotgun. I came to the pawn shop today to see what kind of money I can get out of my rare three-trigger 12-gauge shotgun. I hope today I get a check for $100,000. One thing that I think is really cool about the shotgun is because of the third trigger. It's the one that opens up the breech. OK. So instead of the little lever on the side, they exactly. use that. OK. And I believe it was made for somebody special. That's all hand engraved right there. Oh, absolutely. Stevens, they made good rifles. They made excellent shotguns. We get Stevens guns in here every now and again, but this three trigger model shotgun is something you only hear about. It's rumored Wyatt Earp had one. It's definitely badass. How old is this shotgun? I would put that at about 150 years old. It's in really good shape. What you have here is you got a barrel that's made out of Damascus steel. Mm -hmm. I mean, Damascus steel comes from Damascus, Syria, and there's a few things with the steel there that just made it better. You can see kind of like the wavy lines of the barrel. Pretty much what they would do is they would take wire, wrap it around a solid piece of steel, and heat it up and hammer it till it became one solid piece of steel. Real expensive process, at the time, the best steel in the world. So do you have any idea of what you're looking to get out of it? 100,000. Are we just shooting in the dark there? Nobody's ever seen one before. I've never seen a three-trigger shotgun in all my life. For all I know, the thing could be worth tens of thousands. On the flip side of that coin, it could be worth absolutely nothing. Would you mind if I called a buddy of mine down to have him take a look at it? That'd be fantastic. All right, man, appreciate it. I really want this thing, but when you're dealing with a gun that's this old, lots of things can affect the value. And the last thing I want to do is make an offer and find that I'm way off. Jamison, how you doing, man? Hey, big hoss, how's it going? Going good. I've been a gun appraiser for approximately 16 years and specialize in antique firearms, particularly Western firearms like Colts and Winchesters. Well, Corey, I have to say this is one of the rarest shotguns that I've ever seen. I've only seen maybe four or five in about 16 years of doing this. And most of them, they're unengraved. It's all on the frame and also on the trigger guard. Very nice scroll engraving. I mean, I kind of figure that to engrave it and make it look that good, I'm assuming you had to be kind of a wealthy guy to own it back then. Well, reasonably wealthy. I think people back then appreciated firearms more than they do now, in a way, because they were a sense of livelihood. This shotgun was used for hunting, primarily. It does capture your attention with the three triggers. Other than having the front trigger unlatch the barrels, it's pretty much a standard hammer shotgun. They were very good quality for that period. This gun's seen a lot of wear, a lot of use. This might be a repair. You can see where the grain doesn't quite match, so it might be a little splice right here. You can see the butt is really worn, like it's been used quite a bit. It does have pitting on the barrels. This gun would classify to me in fair condition. Well, hold on there. How would you rate that as not being in excellent condition? It's 150 years old. Doesn't matter. How many matter. have you seen? Yeah, it doesn't matter, sir. You know, in the gun trade, it has to be in really, really mint condition. I think there's a misconception out there that rarity is always worth money. Most of the time, it needs to be old and in excellent condition. I just don't know what it's worth. That's to be expected. It's unusual. Most people wouldn't know what it's worth. This gun in the condition that it's in now would be worth about seven to a thousand dollars. How much? Seven hundred to a thousand dollars. There's no way. If it were in much better condition, it would be worth a lot more money. How much more? If it were in really nice shape, maybe two to three thousand, and I'm saying that maybe. Jimison, thanks for coming in. Thanks a lot, sir. I don't think you will get a better price. If he sells it to anyone who knows firearms, they're not going to give him much more than that for it. If you're going to hold me to make you an offer, I'm going to offer you around 500 bucks. There's no way. I've done turned down 2,500. I honestly would like $10,000. If I were you, I would chase down the guy that offered you 2,500 and shake him down for it. I think maybe the three trigger thing, it might have just not been practical, which could have been why they stopped making the three trigger models. Uh, so you want the 500 bucks? No, I can't take the 500. It's worth more than that just to show to people, my friends, when they come to visit. You know, man, it's been in your family this long. You might as well sure. keep it for another 60 years. I'm going to continue doing my research. In my own heart, I know it's worth more money. What is this? This is a model 1894 Marlin. 
This is like the nicest Marlin you could order out of the catalog, period. Just, a, just about. This is an amazing looking gun. I purchased this gun from a guy, believe it or not, who was 88 years old. I saw this gun when I was 14, and I didn't get this gun until about five years ago. So that's definitely a long chase. You don't see guns that custom, that old. This is probably the best of the best that you can get. Marlon, the guy who owned this company, originally worked for Colt, right? Correct. Every great gun company in the United States in the 1800s either worked for Colt or Winchester at one time. The two big ones. I know they became really huge in military contracts during World War I. Um, they were like the number one manufacturer of machine guns. That's some pretty amazing engraving on this thing. Yeah. You've got platinum and gold on the trigger. Up on the barrel, you also have some gold inlays and uh, platinum inlays there. Special wood, special sights, case-hardened frame, shotgun butt. This gun's got like nine extra features on it. I mean, yeah, it does look to me like if you ordered it out of the catalog, you checked every box. You see the order form now? I want that, I want that, I want that, I want that, I want that. God, it's that much. I want that. <laughs> Just like you get this gun, you can tell someone spent a hell of a lot of time on it. I mean, this gun is top notch, right down from the gun itself to the amazing engraving. To say I'm interested would be an understatement. It's a great rifle. The action's still good. Yeah, I had to have good eyes to look through there. Yeah, yeah, I'm just seeing blur. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How much were you looking to get out of it? I'm looking for 41,000. You do have some little condition issues, oh, which would be a big thing on a gun like this. We got a nasty gouge right here. You, know, you take a gun like this, you start digging it up and scratching it. It's not dollars that it's going away, it's thousands of dollars that are going away. I'm thinking like 20,000. I, I think that's a fair price on the gun. It's a big drop from 41. 21,000, I take the gun, I take all the risk, I'm the one who's gotta resell it, and you walk around out here with money. 28,500. 21,000. That's the best I will go on it. 21,000, I gotta make money. 25,000. $21,000. I'm sticking to my guns. <laughs> oh boy, the money sounds nice. I think I'll do it. Okay, we got a deal, man. I'll meet you right up front. I'll, we'll write this up, just a bit work. I think we could have done better. Definitely gonna miss this firearm. You don't come across these guns too often. We'll put the money into another nice gun. He definitely got a good deal. Earlier, a guy came in with a huge collection of celebrity signed postcards from the 1940s and 50s. I'd never seen a collection quite like it, so I called up my buddy Steve to come down and take a look. Hopefully, he'll be able to tell me if they're legit and what they're worth. That was like a pretty crazy assemblage here. This guy has over 250 autographs from the 1940s and 50s. Wow. Uh, so far, it's everything from Babe Ruth to Marilyn Monroe. It's pretty rare you see like a, you know, just a whole collection like this. You know, obviously this wasn't gotten overnight or whatever. I mean, it's just a massive stack. Tell me a little bit about the history. My uncle was a, uh, a grip in Hollywood during this time, and uh, he would have them sign it to Susie or, or Susan, my mother, and then he would address to her in Brooklyn and send it to her, and that went on for about eight, 10 years. Was it just sitting like in a shoebox packed away in a closet somewhere? It was sitting in a shoebox for as long as I can remember. You took it out of the shoebox, you put it in these containers, and here we are today. That's it. Um, wow, I mean, I'm kind of blown away by all this. I mean, just the fact that they all, they're all dated. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that makes it great. I mean, actually, I think that's probably the, the more cool thing, the dates on each one. That's pretty awesome. I mean, you could, you could chart these things exactly to when they were signed. It's okay if I have a look through Please. some of this? Okay. Please do. All right. Maybe you'll be able to recognize some of them. Do you guys know who this is? Jimmy Stewart. That's Jimmy Stewart. Liberty Valance. Yeah, it's a wonderful life. One of the most famous actors of all time. Do you guys know who that is? Paul Newman. We're talking about the dressing, Paul Newman? Yeah, the dressing, <laughs> uh, the salsa. <laughs> but the great actor, Paul Newman, he one of the toughest autographs to obtain in person. There's no doubt that his uncle was pretty well liked on the set to be able to approach someone like Marilyn Monroe, Babe Ruth. I mean, this guy must have been really popular. Whoa. 
You guys know who that is? Marlon Brando. I mean, this is about one of the strangest guys you're ever gonna come across, and one of the best actors of all time. You know, back in his later years, I mean, I'm talking like 80s, 90s, if you were lucky enough to approach this guy in the street and even ask for his autograph, he used to give you a set of trivia questions you have to answer. And if you answered one wrong, didn't matter, you wouldn't get his autograph. But if you got all five right, he'd sign for you. But with Marlon Brando, when he signed, especially later in life, it was like instant gold. I'm seeing some great names in here. Susan Hayward, Joe DiMaggio. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. I just keep pulling more and more and more. It's just an amazing assemblage. I mean, we're looking at a bunch of deceased celebrities, stuff that you're not gonna get signed anymore. And the most important thing to collectors, that's a vintage dated signature. And that's a really big deal. So Steve, what do you think? What do we got here? Um, I think you've got a pretty phenomenal collection here, if it all checks out. You know, I don't need the Pro Scope today. I mean, I could tell, you know, we've got real writing on this. It's all different kinds of ink. I want to be able to go through my examples, figure out what's here, figure out if anybody, you know, by any chance, if there's a secretary signing for somebody that day. OK. But the bad thing is, is I can't tell you right now. You guys got time today? Is that all right? I got you, my man. Whatever you need, if you want to borrow Chumley or the conference room, whatever you need, I know it's a lot to ask. Do you mind? No. Be my guess. OK. Right on. All right. You might want to grab some lunch or something, because it's going to be a minute, man. <laughs> OK. They said to go get lunch, but I'm so nervous right now, I don't think I can eat anything. How you doing? Doing, doing good. Good. So what do you think? This stuff is all no good. It was a big waste of my time to stand here and go through this stuff. I mean, that's the unfortunate part about it. Really? No. Actually, it's probably one of the best collections I've ever seen. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell you how rare this stuff is. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Elvis Presley, but he's here too. Really? Did you know that? No. <laughs> yeah, Elvis that. Presley made an appearance in here. Um, great example. The guy's not an autograph guy. He didn't get him in person, so he really had no idea that someone like Elvis Presley was just sitting at the bottom of the stack. That is incredible. Frank Sinatra. Do you even know Frank Sinatra was in here? No. no See, idea. you're learning something new every day. Yeah. For 1954. This is at basically the height of Frank Sinatra. Babe Ruth, the great Babe Ruth. Um, this one I really enjoyed a lot. It's dated May 3rd, 1948. You know, three months later, Babe Ruth was dead. The great thing about this Ruth signature is in ballpoint pen. Babe Ruth had a heavy hand, liked to sign him fountain pen. Now, I've had a chance to certify 3,000, 4,000 authentic Babe Ruth signatures in my time at PSA. I've seen maybe 10 sign a ballpoint pen. That's how rare they are. Wow. Well, he came in here wanting 2,500 bucks for all of them. What do you think they're worth? <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Um, but an amazing collection. When I look at the signatures in here, it's pretty crazy. We're talking Humphrey Bogart. I saw Boris Karloff, Jerry Lewis, Willie Mays. I could just keep going on and on. You're looking at anywhere from about Eight to twelve thousand dollars. Wow. Still in twenty five hundred? No. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really yeah, appreciate it. Of course, it, anytime, Matt. Usually I am the guy who gives the bad news. So today I gave some good news and it felt really good. So we found out a lot, my man. What do you want for him now? Um start at eight thousand then. <laughs> I'm gonna be really honest with you. I'm gonna get a lot of money for these when I sell them. But it's going to take years, and it's going to take money. As great as it is to have Babe Ruth's signature, it's really hard to sell it on a postcard right. in a stack. You know, it's going to have to be displayed, put it in a frame. I mean, we're talking, it's going to cost me two to 300 bucks for each one of these I sell. You wanted 2,500. I'll give you six grand. You going to take six grand? Um. Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> it works. I'm sure my mom will be really, really surprised that we got $6,000 for it. Although, I might keep it a secret. How's it going? Good. How you doing today? What do we got here? I got a pest collection I'm looking to unload today. You got any candy? No. These have no candy in them at all. These are all from the 1960s, 1970s. What good are candy dispensers without candy? Come on, man. You work with this guy. to the pawn shop today to try to sell some of my uh, Pez collection. 
I like Pez collecting because they're pretty cool. I mean, it's real Americana. You know, like baseball cards or Barbie dolls, G.I. Joe dolls. It's just fun collecting them. These are very, very collectible, and it's a great hobby. Seems like this is something the kids would be into collecting, man. Come on, man. Busts my balls all day long. I know it might look childish to you, but there's definitely money into it. I have Casper the Friendly Ghost in the original box from the 1960s. This uh, particular Pez here goes for like three to four hundred dollars. I have the Mickey Mouse in the original box. It's a die cut. This piece here goes for about three fifty, four hundred dollars. One of my coolest pieces I like is the original Batman. Very tough to find. You know, this goes for about two fifty, three hundred dollars. We got Bozo, Tinker Bell, a Zorro. The 50 pieces that I'm bringing in today are uh, worth about 5,000. Such a big collector, man. Why are you looking to sell them? Well, to be honest with you, a lot of these are my doubles. Okay. And I just want to unload them. Okay. So I can make money on them and... Uh, buy more Pez, obviously. Buy more Pez, definitely. Okay. More rare ones. I'm definitely interested in these Pez dispensers. I mean, there's a huge community out there of people who collect these things online. My only problem is that there's so many people out there buying and selling these things already that I need to get them really cheap. Otherwise, I'm not gonna be able to sell them. What do we want for them? I'd like to grab 2,500 for them. I'm gonna grab it somewhere else. I'm gonna offer you a grand, my friend, just because I gotta resell them. You could put these on the internet individually and uh, definitely make your money back on these. Well, man, I'm not looking to break even at all. I put them on the internet, next thing you know, I'm competing with five other guys selling the same Pez. I understand that, but these three pieces alone are a Gino. Yeah. These three pieces alone. Give me 2,000, man. 1,000 bucks is what I can do. It's fine. All right, buddy. Get out of here, man. I can't believe one of them guys offered me $1,000 for that, them 50 pieces of Pez. That's an insult to the Pez community. I can't believe it. That's why they're chooches. This is a Sharps 1874. Buffalo rifle. Okay, sounds dangerous. It is dangerous. It can't be any more dangerous than that shirt. This was a very powerful gun. I love it because of the historical connection to the West. I'm hoping to get 37,000. In a few years, I'm gonna have to sell my entire collection. Might as well start now. This is cool. Where did you get it? I bought the rifle from a friend I knew in Wyoming. And he said, you're going to see something like this once in your life. It's for hunting buffalo. It's a 4490 caliber. Now, this was the most powerful caliber made in 1874. Yeah, it was a powerful enough bullet that 800 yards away, you could still bring down a buffalo. Yep. Buffalo hunting was a big business. This rifle would pack one hell of a punch and was the top choice for big game in North America. In 1874, this rifle took the Creedmoor record hitting 19 out of 20 targets at 800 yards. Well, yeah, this is where the term sharpshooter came from, was it from a sharps rifle. Originally, the guys could shoot really far were sharps shooters, because they shot with sharps. I didn't know that. It's definitely cool. It's in great shape. How much did you want to get out of it? I want 37,000 for it. Whoa, this is a gun, not a car. <laughs> <laughs> it's extremely rare. Quite honestly, it sounds a little high. Do you mind if I call someone and take a look at it? I just want to make sure everything is legit, and I'd like to get his opinion on the value. If he knows what he's doing, that'll probably help both of us. OK, let me go give him a call. I'll be right back. Thank you. I'm fine about them bringing in a person with knowledge. This rifle is in very good condition. Man, I'm a pretty good salesperson. It's the Model 1874. This is very accurate. Then you know what gave it that accuracy? was the falling block mechanism. It's a technology that was special and unique to this gun. When you actually have a round in the chamber, the uh, breech goes up, seals the round in the chamber, and doesn't move around, and therefore, it's very accurate. I mean, you shoot this gun, it goes off, it makes a big smoke powder, as you know. Yeah. It's going to knock down whatever it hits. Hey, you're a buffalo hunter. This is a gun you'd like to have. A 4490 is a big bullet. If you shoot a buffalo with a 4490, it's not going to hurt. It's going to kill him. The color back here is a little different than the color up front. But I don't think it matters that much because it's right around where you're manipulating it. So where your hand I can is. really see that that's from some yeah. honest hand wear. Is it all original? Um, it's definitely original. It's also a popular gun. I would think in the Sharps market, this is probably the most popular model. OK. So what do you think it's worth? Um, as it sits, 
Given its condition, given its rarity, I'd probably place this gun maybe six to ten thousand dollars. Well, you know, I'm asking thirty-seven thousand because when I take it out and I show it to my friends, we go on for a half hour talking about the old west and shooting buffalo. So to me, all of that is more valuable. I know you love it. I just don't think you can sell the love. That's just my opinion based upon being a dealer in firearms. This guy talks about sitting around talking to his friends for hours on end about what guns like this did. And it doesn't matter to collectors. They want to buy the gun because it's an 1874 Sharps. You don't need to add something to it unless you want $37,000, in which case you have to tell lots of stories. We seem to be very far apart at the moment. I wouldn't be willing to spend like six grand on the gun. What about stepping up to uh, like 15? No, I'd go six. That's what I paid for years ago. Quite frankly, guns have stayed flat or gone down over the past few years. It's up to you, but I, I really can't pay more than six grand. I guess I'm going to get to shoot it some more. OK. Thank you. Have a good one. I'll just go back and shoot the gun some more. I've got a few years that my shoulder will hold up. <laughs>